JBN, we keep you informed. I am Michelle Jones, and in the news, convicts in Clarendon Kojulpa murder get life sentences 20 years before parole. Two men were among a group of armed thugs who executed four people in Clarendon last month will each have to serve at least 20 years in prison. Andre Bennett and Oral Richards each pleaded guilty to four counts of murder and illegal possession of a firearm in the Home Circuit Court yesterday. Both men were armed with guns but did not fire their weapons. Just after midnight on September 12, when two sisters, their nephew, and one of the women's common law partner were shot execution style in Havana Heights. Richards was sentenced to life in prison for each murder and ordered to serve 20 years before he is eligible for parole. He was also sentenced to 20 years in prison for illegal possession of a firearm. Richards has a previous conviction for illegal possession of a firearm. The sentences are to run at the same time. Bennett was sentenced to 20 years in prison at hard labor for each murder and 10 years for illegal possession of a firearm. He too will serve the sentences simultaneously. Tanisha White, 32, her sister Sharona White, 25, their nephew Luke Newman, 19, and Sharona's partner Michael Solomon, 27, were at home and residents reported hearing loud explosions and summoned the police. All four were shot in the head and torso. Two prisoners missing from Freeport lockup. Two prisoners have been missing from the Freeport police station in St. James. Police sources say the prisoners were discovered missing between 5.30 a.m. and 6 a.m. today. The discovery was made as prisoners were being tallied after their morning shower. 20-year-old Alex Scott was being held on a wounding with intent charge and 29-year-old Ainsley Woodburn is on a murder charge. The police report that Scott and Woodburn were among five detainees released from their cell. When the group returned to the cell, the two men were not seen. A thorough search revealed no physical breakout, police sources say. It would seem as if they were released by someone, a highly placed police source said. A major probe into the disappearance is now underway. $100 million SIM swap scam, four before court for alleged fraud. Four persons were on Thursday brought before the Kingston and St. Andrew Parish Court, accused of fleecing millions of dollars from the bank accounts of customers of the First Caribbean International Bank. The crime was allegedly carried out utilizing the SIM swap method. This occurs where unsuspecting customers' SIM cards that are linked to his or her bank account are compromised and the telephone numbers are taken over by fraudsters who then create online banking profiles for the victim's accounts using the victim's telephone number. Through this scam, one account was credited for more than $22 million and the fraud has already racked up $100 million. The four accused in the first Caribbean case are Dusane Malton, Akeem Plummer, Martina Shim, and Denoy Hermit, who are charged with various fraud-related offenses. They have not yet entered a plea. Malton, an accountant, is being charged with three counts of conspiracy to defraud, simple arsony, and three counts of facilitating a transaction involving criminal property. Plummer is being charged with three counts of conspiracy to defraud, two counts of facilitating a transaction involving criminal property. Shim, a call center employee, is charged with two counts of simple arsony, two counts of conspiracy to defraud, and two counts of engaging in a transaction that involves criminal property. Hermit, a call center employee, has a charge of simple arsony, conspiracy to defraud, and engaging in a transaction that involves criminal property. When the accused appeared before senior parish judge Lorian Cole Montecule, the allegations are that the First Caribbean International Bank made a report to the Constabulary Financial Unit of Occurrences of Fraud and Larceny being committed by a syndicate who manipulated the bank's online banking platform to conduct fraudulent transactions. The accused, who were granted station bail of $200,000 each, have been ordered fingerprinted by the judge. They have also been ordered to surrender their travel documents and stop orders were imposed. They are expected to return to court December 13. Sent and teen gets over three years in prison for illegal gun. A teenager who pleaded guilty to illegal possession of firearm and ammunition was on Friday sentenced to three years and two months in prison when he appeared before the Sent and Circuit Court. Nicholas McNamee, 18, who is from Droxall Country Club in Sent Ann was sentenced to three years and two months on one count of illegal possession of firearm and two years each on two counts of illegal possession of ammunition. High Court Judge 
Justice Andrew Pettigrew Collins ordered the sentences to run concurrently. McNamee was arrested following an operation along Newland Street in Ocherius on February 5 of this year. Police reports are that about 4.45 p.m. an operation was conducted, during which a Toyota Axe motor car in which McNamee and another male teen were traveling was stopped and searched. A 9mm pistol with a magazine containing 15 9mm rounds of ammunition was found, a police report said at the time. It is understood that a subsequent search was conducted at McNamee's home, which resulted in the seizure of more ammunition. JTA supports phased resumption of face-to-face -face classes. The Central Executive of the Jamaica Teachers Association, JTA, has given its support for a phased resumption of schools on a face-to-face -face basis. This position comes after a meeting held on Friday. The JTA has, however, stated that while it supports the phased resumption of face-to-face -face classes, the latter must be guided by the Disaster Risk Management Act, DRMA. It also stated that the Ministry of Education must outline a structured resumption plan and that all schools must be provided with the required resources as stipulated by public health protocols. Although the government had hoped to resume face-to-face -face classes at the start of the 2021-22 academic year in September, a rise in COVID cases island-wide saw the Ministry of Education extending virtual learning instead. At that time, Minister of Education Favel Williams said the online teaching and learning dynamic will continue until the country is able to once more handle the face-to-face -face component. The JTN release yesterday also shared that in the phase resumption of physical classes, priority must be given to students who are preparing for external exams. Guns and ammo seized as cops carry out raids in St. Andrew South. The St. Andrew South police say they have stepped up their operations to clamp down on criminals wreaking havoc in the division with their latest set of raids reaping success. Head of Operations in the division, Superintendent Damien Madison, said in the past two days, two firearms and several rounds of ammunition were seized. The first operation took place on Thursday during a joint police-military cordon and search and targeted raid operation in the Two Miles area. One 9mm pistol with serial numbers erased and 12 9mm rounds with one magazine were recovered at 22A Boynes Road, Kingston 13. No one was arrested. On Friday, October 22, between 4 p.m. and 6 p.m., a targeted raid was conducted within the Zone of Special Operation of Greenwich Town at 4 9th Street, where one Eklund Koch 9mm pistol, one magazine containing six 9mm rounds, and six AK-47 rounds was recovered. One man in whose waistband the gun was found was arrested and charged. And with the latest level of success, police have vowed to continue the operation in a no-nonsense move. We continue to mount the pressure on the gangsters across the St. Andrew South Division, one seizure at a time, one arrest at a time, as we seek to create safer communities, said Manderson. 189 new COVID cases in Jamaica, 22 more deaths. Jamaica recorded 189 new COVID-19 cases and 22 deaths on Friday, bringing the infection total to 88,159 and the virus death toll to 2,175. The deaths occurred between August 30 and October 21, 2021. The Ministry of Health and Wellness reported that the new cases comprise 77 females and 112 males with ages ranging from 5 months to 98 years. The cases were recorded in St. Catherine, 101, Kingston and St. Andrew, 29, St. James, 12, St. Thomas, 9, Trelawney, 8, Clarendon, 7, Manchester and St. Anne, 6 each, St. Elizabeth and Hanover, 3 each, St. Mary and Westmoreland, 2 each, Portland, 1. The deceased are a 60-year-old male from Hanover previously under investigation, a 45-year-old female from Hanover, an 89-year-old female from Manchester, and an 89-year-old male from Manchester, both previously under investigation, a 79-year-old female, a 93-year-old male, an 86-year-old male, an 85-year-old male, a 69-year-old male, and a 79-year-old male all from St. James, an 89-year-old male, and an 80-year-old female from Kingston and St. Andrew, an 85-year-old male, and an 89-year-old female from St. Elizabeth, a 76-year-old male and an 88-year-old male from St. Catherine, an 88-year-old male and a 65-year-old male from Portland, an 18-year-old female and a 79-year-old male from St. Anne, 
a 61-year-old female from Westmoreland and an 81-year-old female from Westmoreland previously under investigation. In the meantime, 164 more people recovered in the last 24 hours, bringing total recoveries to 56,435. Currently, 325 people are hospitalized, 35 of which are severely ill, while 22 are critically ill and 60 are moderately ill. There are 28,952 confirmed active COVID-19 cases on the island. JBN, we keep you informed. Please remember to subscribe, like, share, leave us a comment and click the notification bell to receive our daily news items.